Hello and welcome to Nikon Report, your weekly round of all the latest Nikon news and all other photographic announcements that we found interesting. It's Constantine here. And this is Becky. And this is issue 100. <laughs> You're gonna put like fireworks. confetti and exactly. fireworks, everything, and dollar, just notes flying around. So no new can use today. It's all about us for about our lawn. <laughs> We just Special edition. bath in the sunshine of the positive comments that you're going to give us under this video. But actually, we do already do that and feed our egos on the live stream every Friday. So we will talk about some Nikon news today. Okay, well, let's go to the Nikon news then. Let's start with the quick ones and then we're going to get to the meat of this podcast, which is Nikon discontinues flash guns. That's a big one. <gasps> yeah. But we're going to get there in about five minutes. So first of all, Nikon Z 40 millimeter, the famous lens that everyone wanted. It is now available in special edition for extra 50 pounds. It's shipping all over the world. And apparently it is available in stock in Europe and UK. It is. We did get a small delivery. We fulfilled at least 99% of our back orders and we're expecting more very, very soon. If you are looking for a special edition 40 mil, bearing in mind the primary difference is cosmetic solely cosmetic, it is the same lens otherwise in every other respect, to the normal 40 f2, then you can place your order now. Fantastic. And then Z50 saw a firmware update. Yay! Came late after all the lenses and Z850, but they've added quite a few things and autofocus is one of them. That's right. It's now the Z50's time to shine. So those of you who were saying, what about the Z50? Here we go. They've added eye detection autofocus, which is now available during video recording. Super useful. Improved eye detection performance for auto area autofocus. They've improved the refresh rate of the focus points displayed in live view during subject tracking and face eye detection AF. So if you have a Z50 and you want those autofocus upgrades which make it kind of Z30 slash ZFC-esque in its video capabilities, then go over to the link in the description box and you can do it right there. And for you Z62 and Z72 users, the comments are open. <laughs> we will always encourage you to comment and, and have a little groan. Exactly. So the next one up is Nikon updated the wireless transmitter utility for Mark. It's at version 1.9.9. So the version 2 is coming soon. So they've added bits and they've taken things away. It gives us and it's... Us, <laughs> they, yeah. they give us and they take us away. Exactly. So they've given us us support for Mac OS Ventura version 13, and they have take us away Mac OS Catalina 10.15 compatibility. So there you go. All right. Now, since we covered all the Nikon news, let's talk about Nikon's announcements. So basically, a couple of things happened. They have announced discontinuation of SB500 due to the parts shortage, but they also suspended the orders of SB500. B5000 flash guns and they said we haven't discontinued it yet but we are stopping the pre-orders just want to make sure that we're going to fill them first so the notice came out on Nikon Japan's website on 26th of January just a few days ago exactly so what did they say Becky they said we'd like to inform you that the production of the Speedlight SB500 which was temporarily suspended on August 4th 2022 will be discontinued due to the uncertain future supply of parts due to a delay in the supply of parts for the Speedlight SB5000 it will take some time to deliver the product to customers we have have decided to stop taking more orders. So the question is whether or not this will then be followed by a discontinuation of the SB5000 altogether. But as they suspended orders for the time being, we imagine that it will be a while before they either open up orders or then do any further further action on it. That's true. So it's a very interesting thing. They, they say they have stopped pre-orders of SB5000, but then underneath it says discontinued. Now, if you actually go to Nikon Japan's website that shows all the current flash lineup, SB5000 is still a current one, together with SB700 that's been out stock for quite some time, but finally got back in stock. But we also have our 1C1 units in, as well as, which is interesting, the SBN7 flash for Nikon One system. We haven't seen this one for years. It is interesting that the units that have the creative lighting system compatibility, which is essentially a kind of infrared signal based transmission, those seem to be reasonably available now. Like for example, we have the SBR1C ones in stock. That's the close up commander kit for those who don't know. The SU800, which is the commander 
that allows for infrared communication to multiple speed lights, compatible speed lights. SB700, that's also CLS or creative lighting system compatible. So the two speed lights that seem to be having the difficulties are the more recent ones, which have instead Nikon's AWL or Advanced Wireless Lighting System, which instead uses radio signals in order to communicate with cameras and other flashes. Now, I wonder if it's those components specifically, the radio transmission components, which is what's making those speed lights hard to produce. Okay, well, what puzzles me, and that's the question for how long we're going to have as B5000 on the current lineup. Nikon releases B5000 as well as WR10 wireless mm -hmm. commander kit, which was later replaced with WR11, mm -hmm. with the promises that we're going to get a radio triggering system, fully TTL, on further flash guns. SB5000 and SB500 are the only flash guns that are compatible with it. Even SB700, which is a current flash, is not compatible anymore. Now, that's been years since that's been released. Nothing came out after that. No. So the question is, really, with the Nikon announcement of collaboration and partnership with Nissin and Profoto back in November last year, what's going to happen? I mean, we've seen the signs of Nikon abandoning the flash guns. Mm -hmm. So, and it's not just flash guns, actually, it's accessories in general, I think. Tom Hogan wrote an interesting article and he's been quite critical on that. He said, the problem is that I haven't found any third party flash solution as opposed to studio solution to be satisfactory beyond the reverse engineering triggering firmware update needs for the significant third party flash units as Nikon makes changes to cameras. I've also found that the consistency of exposure to be off with most units I've tried. By off, I mean not what Nikon calculates for their own units. I've written it before and I'll write it again. Nikon needs to fix their accessory situation. It is not prioritized at the same level as cameras and lenses and that's definitely something we've seen in the past for example battery packs camera mm. is announced battery pack is announced and then we waiting for several months for the battery packs to arrive after the arrival of the camera yeah even simple things like lens hoods spare lens hoods and stuff like and tripod feet and things ml7 ml7 which we actually stock but i have been told on great authority by many customers that there are a lot of people that don't have that in stock so tom goes on to say solutions are often compromised by farming out design and parts choices and the general unavailability of accessories has been a problem going back far into the dslr era it's the z system and that requires that it actually be a system not just some cameras and lenses. We users don't care if it's difficult for Nikon to fix, the situation needs fixing, stat. Even if that's eventually saying, buy Nissin. Nikon do better. That's how he concludes this. And I agree with him because when we're looking at Z system as a complete system, it doesn't just include cameras and lenses, it's a full ecosystem, including accessories such as flash guns, remote triggers, battery packs, and just regular batteries. Yeah. Z50 and L25 was a big issue back in the day. It was. And it's been out of stock for almost a year. It's been coming in and out in the small quantities. And we still don't have a mains adapter for the Z50 because that doesn't look like something that Nikon are going to produce at any point, which is a shame because the ZFC and the Z30 already have hot charging capabilities. They don't need an AC adapter. But if you were an early adopter of the DXZ system like I was, then you don't have a solution for plugging that into the main. So therefore, it renders the camera essentially unusable for things like long streams and for lengthy video recording, which is problematic. Part of the issue, I think, has been particularly with the wireless remote system, that WR10 changing to WR11, etc. system is that what I've been told completely unofficially by you know who, someone who told me this recently, the reason why even the WRR11 remote is so difficult to get hold of or the T part of it is that legislation has changed between Japan and Europe on particular components mm -hmm. which means that they're not actually allowed to produce and sell these in Europe and the UK now we're still subject to the laws even though we're not part of the EU but anyway I think the important thing is the communication mm, for sure especially when you're looking at the system as a complete system when you don't have the flash guns you should tell us, go buy Nissin or go buy Profoto. For sure. Because then I know where to go. Even re-release the same flash guns in a new case and call them ZSB5000 or something like this would produce a good wheel towards the brand. Because when people are buying the camera and they need a flash gun, they're not looking at third party first. They're looking at the native options. Yeah. And there was 
always the case. I mean, I had a, I started with a B28. I had this B600, this B800, mm -hmm. 900, 910, and even 5000s. And I would always go for Nikon flash guns personally. Yeah. yeah. So when we don't have that communication, when we see the announcement and we kind of have to make our own conclusion yeah. and speculate, I don't think it's the right approach personally. No, I think, as you say, more communication, not less, is the thing to take away from this. So if we have a look at what is available and what third-party options are out there, what have we got really? All right, so first of all, Nikon officially announced on the partnership with Nissan Pro Photo in November 2021. Wow, a long so time ago. Nissan has two flash guns that were developed mm. together with Nikon. And when we're talking developed with Nikon, what we think is happening there, that Nissan's modern flash is a flash gun, but Nikon supports either Nissan or Pro Photo with uh, certain adjustments, let's say technology in terms of compatibility with the all current cameras. Mm -hmm maybe TTL functionality, you name it. So there's some sort of support so they don't need to reverse engineer in-house. So we have MG60 flash gun, which is a pro flash gun, and that's their cheap option at $400. Again, it's still fairly expensive, so it's not like 250 pounds like SB700. So no. I would still call it on professional range. And then they have one up from there, which is MG80 Pro, which is slightly bigger, will have more power, so slightly higher guide number at 450. Now, even if you look at the compatibility chart with these flash guns, they're not fully supported by all current cameras. So, for example, cameras like Z6, Z5, Z50, and ZFC will require film webbing. Mm. Which again, comes into the point where if you buy a third party lens, you need to make sure that your camera is either on the latest firmware or you don't have to update the firmware because it may break the compatibility. Yeah. So when we talked about Chinese manufacturers like field trucks, yeah. that was a big issue there. Yeah, so sure. the same applies to MG80 Pro flash gun. So keep an eye on that. Again, we don't just buy a flash and it's plug and play. Well, I would say 95% it is there and it supports full TTL functionality. It's not 100% compatible. What you also need to keep in mind that neither Nissin nor Pro Photo flash guns will work with WR11. Mm. So won't work with the Nikon radio triggering system. So you still need to buy either their own trigger, so Nissin trigger or Pro Photo trigger, but you can't use it otherwise. So yeah. again, you're buying a flash, you may want to invest in the compatible trigger, but which is not Nikon. Right, now let's move on to Profoto. So Profoto have the A10, which is $1,095. It's a much higher price point, which is expected from a premium brand like Profoto. What I don't like about Profoto, in this case, they had A1X, which came out in 2019, and then this one, came out two years later. Mm -hmm. So with Profoto, they tend to update their units more frequently. I don't know if it's to do with uh, just, you know, selling more products to existing clientele. Right. But it is on the second version already. So SB5000 has been around for quite some time now. So almost, what, nine, ten years or so. Keep that in mind. Double the price. And it's not cheap. No. It's $1,100, but it's fully supported by Nick and it's licensed, etc., etc. Now, let's look at other third parties, which are effectively reverse engineering the TTL functionality for Nikon cameras. And there, we have a lot more options and they're a lot cheaper. So let's start with Godox, which is well-known brand nowadays. They have V860 Mark III TTL flash gun, which is $230. Then we have Yonggyo with several options from about $120 to about $160. And the cheapest flash gun that I found that will give you TTL functionality on Nikon camera is Mike MK420. So have a look at those. Again, you buy a third party flash, it's reverse engineered, so highly likely you're gonna be fine, but it's not the same no. as spending money on a proper flash. I mean, let's have a look at Nikon lineup of SB500, which is priced about, what, 230 pounds, mm -hmm. SB700, which is about 270 pounds, Ish, yeah. and SB5000, which is 500 pounds. So you had an entry, a middle ground, and a pro choice. Yeah. In this case, the range is quite significant, from $50 to about $1,100. That's right. And I do think that it would be better if Nikon had all the entry points, even supported by a third-party brand. Like if they said, oh, Nissan will have an entry-level flash. We used to have the little SB400s and SB300s. They were like £99 or 110 something like that. That is, you know, for your beginner. 
And then the SB500 was if you wanted something a little bit more serious and so on. So it would be good to reflect that in the third party compatible brands. But if you've had some success with speed lights yourself and you want to make any suggestions, please do pop them in the comments below. Any of our other viewers that are looking for compatible speed lights may appreciate these tips from viewers. As a personal note, I would love Nikon to keep their flash guns while I know it may be not important for professional photographers because they will do their research and they will get the flash gun that they have. But for people who are just buying their first Nikon, it would be always nice to have an option. And even if it's developed by other manufacturer and has a Nikon brand on it, we have a similar analogy in the Nikon lens lineup, mm. but also from past Tom Hogan articles, he mentioned that Nissin was making some flash guns for Nikon in the past. So you, right. that partnership was there. Right. So in my opinion, I would rather Nikon have flash guns, even if they're made by Nissin, but with the Nikon logo. It just makes a choice for people entering the system a lot easier. And then you can have different price points to entry. But do let us know what you think about it in the comments below. Smooth. All right, let's move on to some other news. Nikon support updates an article on remote camera control software, aka tethering. So if you're not sure which bit of software you need to use with your camera to tether to the computer, Nikon has a few tables for you. Your two options are the good old gold standard Camera Control Pro 2, which is available through the purchase of a license key, but usually doesn't need any extra additional hardware apart from a tethering USB cable. Although there are some cameras that do require some kind of additional module to make that work for tethering. Then the other option is NX Tether, which is an entirely free software and also can be connected via USB cable, but for some cameras, Again, if you want wireless compatibility, you will definitely need a wireless transmitter of some form. We have included a link to that in the description box below if you would like to have a look at what software is recommended for your camera. And now the news about the most popular camera from Nikon Z lineup, Z30. It yeah. finally got its own silicon covers. Yeah, very fancy silicon covers available from Easy Cover have designed three new silicon protective covers for your Z30. Now, these are not particularly waterproof or anything like that. They're just to protect the camera from getting any extraneous dust and dirt and moisture inside them. We've got a black option, a yellow option, and a lovely camouflage option as well if you're going into the jungle. I wish they would just add ears to those silicon cases, added, just like on the phones. If they added like Pikachu is to yeah. the yellow one, yeah. I might get one. Definitely, <laughs> uh, Pikachu edition, Hello Kitty edition. I think this is the <laughs> camera that deserves it, really. <laughs> yeah. But from one anecdote to another, apparently somewhere on the internet, Nikon D750 camera hit 1 million clicks. Yeah, without changing the shutter, a D750 has actually made it to 1 million shutter actuations. A gentleman called Shandor Balico posted a time-lapse video on YouTube and while making the time-lapse, his D750 camera surpassed a million clicks. He also took a screenshot from camerashuttercount.com, which is where you can check for your actuations. He says, it happened. DSC8669.nef, that's his raw file, at 8.29 on the morning. My Nikon D750 surpassed 1 million clicks in the shutter count. I hoped for some epic shots for the 1 millionth anniversary, but the weather was not cooperative. Boo. That raw file will be indefinitely cherished in his mind. It will. <laughs> for his whole life. Now... Nikon Charter has been raised for about 150,000. So that's what Nikon tested. Uh, yeah, 150,000. And some cameras go up to 250, 300. We haven't really had any cameras that Nikon have tested beyond 300,000, but we have seen, for example, D3s, D3Ss hit the four, five, 600,000 range. I have, this is the first time I've seen one that's gone to a million. No, no, I've saw one. You I saw, saw one? D3 in Germany hit over a million clicks. Wow. So that was uh, from a few years ago. So generally when they say it's been rated for that, it doesn't mean that it will just stop working. There's no internal clock. It's not a printer with the ink where it just stops working, you know. You'll um, get 40 pages from this ink cartridge. And after that, you just have to spend exactly. the cost of the printer and again. And you get a screwdriver and you have to refill it and you have to flash the chip again. I mean, come on, who does that? <laughs> so, but it doesn't stop when it hits 150, so it will continue to work again. And generally when people ask us, do I have to replace the shutter? Well, no, you don't. Until it's broken, you don't really need to do that. It used to cost about four, 500 pounds back in the day to replace the shutter on the camera. Mm -hmm. If you have an old camera and you worry that if your shutter failure, if it's still supported by Nikon, I would just send it 
just to make sure that, that you replace your shutter before the service support ends for this product. So, but otherwise, I won't worry too much. There we go. Next up, Tamron builds a new factory in Vietnam to further strengthen its production facilities. So Tamron have announced plans to build a new factory. Tamron have production bases in Japan, China and Vietnam already, one in Hanoi City. And it looks like the construction of the new factory will improve their overall production facilities and system. They said, we will strive to improve our corporate value by responding flexibly to market changes and customers customer needs, further expanding our business and achieving sustainable growth. The new factory in Viet Vietnam will produce interchangeable lenses for cameras with interchangeable lenses. That's <laughs> nice, isn't it? Because you don't want to really build interchangeable lenses for cameras that don't take interchangeable lenses, isn't it? Exactly. They'll also be producing lenses for vehicles, for surveillance, etc. The investment amount is 4 billion yen and Tamron is scheduled to announce its financial results for the year on February 8th. Yeah. As we all know, 4 billion yen is about 20 pounds in UK money. So, but the reason I put this news in there, it's not directly mentioned Nikon, but we've seen certain lenses released for Nikon Z Simpson and the native Tamron Z7300 has been out. So who knows, maybe this factory will somehow be related to Nikon. You never know, but really? it's interesting to see that in a shrinking market, the companies are investing and expanding. Indeed. All right, now well, let's talk about culture. Yeah, so the Centre for British Photography is now open to the public. It's a new home for British photography, opened up in London and promises to be a hub for connecting photography and photographers across the nation. It's in German Street. Yeah, it's very close to Buckingham Palace. Yes, for those of you that don't know, German Street is in central London, located just off Piccadilly, very close to Green Park and Piccadilly Underground stations, and is one minute from the Royal Academy. German Street is the kind of place where you can go into very posh shops and buy all those sort of exclusive and fancy items. I'm like, what do you buy? You go to Davidoff and you buy some cigars and then you go to, where's where's Crockett and Jones? Is it on German Street? I know where Crocs at Piccadilly Street. But... <laughs> and then you go and get some custom suits tailored for you. So German Street is very, very, very smart area. You're going to cut all that out. <laughs> British, in it. And the admission to all exhibitions is free. Ah, that's the most important bit. Yeah. But you know, I personally, as a man of culture myself, I expect a lot of photographs of English breakfast, beans and mushrooms and eggs, and the sausage rolls. Well, if you'd like to see a small sample of the work that is going to be at least currently exhibited there, have a look at the link in the description box below. There's an article by the wonderful folks over at Amateur Photographer on the new Centre for British Photography. So go have a read of that. Definitely looking forward to going there myself. Yes. All right, let's move on to review section. And we have the one and only review of a 40mm Voigtlander Nikon Z lens by truly yours, yours truly, Con and Becky, Becky and Con, in the field, in winter. In the snow, good times. Yeah, so we reviewed the 40mm 1.2 Z full frame lens. It is a spectacular little lens and uh, we share our findings on the YouTube channel. We published that this weekend. Go and have a look at that if you're interested and we'll have more reviews for you incoming very, very soon. And that's a wrap of this 100th anniversary issue of a podcast. Excellent. Thank you very much for watching and or listening. Please give us a like and a subscribe, a rating, a review, things. This and that. <laughs> Did you know that we're also available as audio version on podcast platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music and Spotify? You can even throw some questions through those platforms. Yes. And if you'd like to find us on the interweb, you can find me at Rebecca underscore Danese on Instagram, the shop at Nikon at Grays. And I'm at Konstin Kochkin. We'll see you maybe next week, maybe not. For the 101st yeah. edition. Or shall we just stop? Shall we wrap up and say it's done? No, we've got news for next week. We've got news for you. We've got news for you. So watch this space. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>